guys, welcome back. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms, and guess what? Today is day 13 of the 25 days of thriftmas. So we are going to be tackling a barn quilt today. Many of you have been asking for a barn quilt tutorial, and I am gonna walk you through step-by-step -step on how I create those beautiful barn quilts. For the longest time, everybody has been asking, do I have a tutorial for my barn quilts? So we're gonna start small today and we are going to create a mini barn quilt. So you do need a board of some sort and it should be the same size all the way around. So like six by six, five by five, 12 by 12. And I always paint it with a outdoor paint. Um, all my bases are painted with Sherwin-Williams exterior paint. And um, for starters here, what we're going to do is I like to create a border around my barn quilts. I just think it adds so much to each of the barn quilts. So uh, because this is a six by six little board, we are going to do a quarter inch uh, parameter around that entire piece, a border. So you just take your ruler and you measure over a quarter inch and then over a quarter inch and then you line it up and you draw a straight line. And we're gonna do that all the way around. And this I think really sets the whole piece apart. Some other tools that you'll need for this would be a ruler. I love working with the clear rulers, but if you just have a regular ruler, they work fine as well, and a pencil. Uh, and uh, the pencil, um, that the eraser that comes with most pencils, typically is not my favorite. I do recommend having just a little pink eraser. Um, I always pick up a few at the beginning of the school year because when I'm drawing out all my barn quilts, sometimes I even make a mistake drawing these out. So next you're gonna have to come up with a pattern. And this is where things can get a little tricky and what we're drawing today is a cardinal pattern. And uh, uh, you break it down in how many blocks. And so I broke this down into five blocks. Uh, the distance between on um, from the inside of the border to the other side and we're going to divide you're going to measure that and then divide it by five and it came out to being like 1.32 inches per section so I, what I'm doing is I am measuring around the on each side and I'm going to measure 1.32, 1.32, 1.32. So you'll have five little dashes and you'll have that all the way around. And then that's when you can start creating your actual pattern. So I hope I explained that okay, but um, you really have to break it down like you're a quilter and you have to chunk it out. And um, it's not just like drawing, you know, like a free flowing cardinal. You have almost like little sections or blocks. And that's what you have to think about with creating a barn quilt. So now that I actually have all the sections laid out, I am going to start kind of connecting the dots, creating um, like the dots where I think I want that. One thing you do want to take into consideration when you are doing your measurements, at first, if you saw I started, I had my ruler all the way to the edge, you have to start from the inside of your border. So I initially erased that, and now we're gonna just start connecting the dots and drawing out our pattern. I think drawing out the pattern is by far the most complicated portion of this. And when I am creating my barn quilts, that's what I do. I go around, I lay them all out, and I just start, I do a border on each one, and then I draw my design out. And then from there, that's where the fun part starts because then you can start picking colors and getting really creative. Um, the one thing too is when you're drawing these out, it is not like you're sewing this. So it does not have to be perfect. 
Uh, a lot of um, when I'm teaching classes, a lot of people think that everything has to be absolutely perfect. Um, if it's not like exactly like 1.32, it's okay. As long as you're fairly close and when you're eyeing up um, like the diagonal, as long as it's semi-close, it's going to be work out and look great in the end. So again, I am just starting to draw out my pattern. Where I On this, we're going to have a cardinal. He's going to be perched on a branch. He's going to have some leaves. And so you're going to see some triangles here. We're going to create a beak on him. And then we get to start making such pretty fun colors with him. Um, the coloring is going to be like he's going to have two different reds. The leaves will be two different greens. Um, so it's just a lot of fun creating your barn quilts. So I thought about walking you through even like step by step and like, okay, I'm going to create this line and I'm going to create that line and this is what I'm doing. I felt like that would um, unfortunately just take, this video would be extremely long um, if I would do a step-by-step -step, like where each line was. So I'm just giving you a brief overview of how I do that. And you can do this with any pattern that you can find in a quilting book. So here it is. I have the entire pattern drawn out and you can see like the top chunk of his body is going to be a different color than the bottom. And now let's start painting. So for starters, what I do is I go ahead and I put a, um, I use blue tape, blue painter's tape, and I start by applying the blue painter's tape to the entire piece. From there, I decided I was going to set the cardinal off with a black border and I'm painting on the outside and I'm just doing one even coat to the entire piece. Uh, one tip is once I get this painted, I pull the blue tape right away. I don't let it sit there and I don't let it dry. Um, and you probably are wondering what type of paint I'm using. Now, pre me offering DIY paint, I did because I paint so many of these and I use set colors. I really have certain colors that I do love. I went and I bought all exterior Sherwin-William paints and I put them all inside of the containers um, that you can pick up at Walmart for a dollar. So here I am removing the blue painter's tape and typically um, people get very nervous if it is not a crisp clean line. In the end, what I do is I take my hand sander and I like to distress the piece because I like the grain of the wood to come through. I like it to look like it's an aged barn quilt, um, like that's been on a old barn for years and years. Uh, some people do not like that look and that is fine, but that is the way I do it. Um, I have been asked like, why don't you use the green frog tape? It is a whole lot more expensive than the blue tape and it it basically does exactly um, what I want it to do. So now that the border is dry and I do recommend having like a hair dryer or a heat gun. Um, prior to me having a heat gun, <laughs> I have always used my hair dryer and it really speeds up the whole process of um, painting the whole barn quilt. Uh, when I am prepping for a show, I do multiple at the same time. And so when the first one's drying, I'm on the second one, then I go back to the first one or I do a third one. Uh, and that uh, really prevents me from having to using the hair dryer um, or heat gun now uh, but basically what i'm doing now that the border is dry i am taping off my first section now this i'm going to um, paint like a really dark uh, burgundy and so now it's all taped off let's break out the it's like a, a spiced 
cranberry, I think is what it's called. And what we're I'm doing is I'm just applying a really nice even coat to the entire piece. I think where people go wrong with painting these is they either apply too thin of a coat or they get a lot of brush strokes in there and then they do not like that look. I try to have um, put on a lot of pressure on the um, paintbrush so it does not leave a lot of brush strokes and it's just real nice and even. Now I did have to touch up one spot so when I removed the tape there was one little spot that my finger nicked and I touched up that spot. Um, now that this is dry I pulled it aside I did dry it and now I'm going to go into the next um, area of the uh, cardinal and this I believe is called like cardinal red so it's very appropriate for um, that we're painting a cardinal today again I'm just taping off the next area and then we work in sections and um, so for instance when we get to the leaves we're going to tape off all the leaves that we're painting the same color and that's what we're doing we're just trying to chunk off areas and then paint those so you can see that it's really starting to come together. We have some really pretty color contrast going on. Now I'm going to um, start on his face. I'm going to, each cardinal has that little black section. We're going to um, put a little black there. His beak is going to be yellow and he is still really starting to come together. So now this is where we're at and now we're going to start uh, doing the leaves and I did pick out two different leaves um, picked out one um, color that was really light and then a contrasting color that was really dark. So now that the light green leaves are dry we're going to start tackling the dark green leaves and I just tape those off and then paint those and then finally um, below I am going to tape off the branch and then paint that more of like a you know like a, a brownish color so at this point many of you may want to stop here but this is where I add my little special touch and I go and I start sanding it so I just take my hand sander and I just distress it. Um, I like to make sure I distress the white portions of it. Um, this one, I don't know if my sandpaper was a little bit old from a project I did. There was a couple areas I didn't like, but that's, you know, that's what happens when you distress it and you make it your own. Each piece comes out looking completely different. Now what I do is I have created a mixture and this is kind of like a secret formula that I do not give out and I have gotten some backlash about that but you can use whatever you want. This really just seals um, the piece for ex the exterior and it gives it more of, you know, like a, an aged look. Um, it took me a while to come up with this. So this is kind of like my own signature solution. Uh, so what I do recommend is just taking, if you want this look, you know, take wax or what have you. Um, I wipe it on, I wipe it off, and then it's done. And I always finish the backside of all my barn quilts. So you can see this one is going to be inside anyway, because it's going to be into in my um, holiday decor. But I always finish my pieces on the backside as well. So here it is. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's video and you learned a little bit something about barn quilts. you did learn something today. 
Uh, barn quilts are so beautiful and here in Wisconsin, we do have the barn quilt map um, in Shano County. So you can actually pull it up and go from barn to barn to barn and see all the beautiful barn quilts. And so that's really how I came up with the idea of creating a barn quilt for your home. And again, I hope that you guys learned a little bit on how I create those beautiful barn quilts. Now in tomorrow's video, I am going to show you my tree. I'm gonna bring you along from opening the eggnog to hanging the lights and showing you all my beautiful ornaments. So stick around for that. You guys have a wonderful evening and we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.